Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to show you different types of creamers in this Keurig K Cafe. So the Keurig K Cafe has a nice frother, and I've shown you that you can froth milk, whole milk, almond milk, but I get a lot of questions about different types of creamers. So I went and bought these. Um, you can get them at Walmart or Target. They're about five bucks. This is the Starbucks. This is the dairy one that's creamer. This is the non-dairy one. So I'm going to show you that you can froth all three of these in this, but they all don't taste the same. So first thing, you got to unscrew this top, and there is a, a seal in there. And then you do have to kind of keep these shook, and you have to refrigerate all three of these. But let's pour... Let's pour it in, almost to the latte line, and we'll hit the latte button. Now it is a little thicker than normal, but the machine does froth it just fine. If your frother doesn't kick on right away, it could be because your heating element is heating the water tank inside here. When that's heating up, the frother won't work. So just be patient. It'll start as soon as it's ready when that's done heating. So again, you don't get a, a bunch of foam. And these creamers, especially these, I'm kind of partial to French, the cap, cap, Coffee Mate. Um, I've just been drinking it for a while. These are really strong. So if you're thinking of using this in place of milk, you can, but they are just super, super uh, rich. Very, very rich. Even the Coffee Mate's very rich, but not as rich as these Starbucks ones. So the frother will heat it up to 150 degrees. Okay, so there we go. There's the white chocolate mocha. This is very, very rich. But it does do a decent job of frothing it. Again, that's just, it's so much richer than a milk when you froth milk. Okay, so let's do the non-dairy. It says it's almond milk and oat milk. I do like this top better than this one. This one kind of splashes all over when you close it. This one you got to press down. Again, make sure you shake these really well. They do settle. They do uh, separate. And then just press the latte button. This one is a little bit runnier than this one, and this one may not be, this one's definitely the, the richest. Um, this one's not as rich, but it's still awfully rich, and it's got kind of a different, uh, that non-dairy kind of has a different taste to it. It still tastes decent, and again, it's just going to be super rich for a coffee. Okay, so the non-dairy is done. You can see it does, I get more froth, just a little bit more froth from the non-dairy one. And it does smell. This one smells a little better. This one's just so rich. Um, this one smells really good. And last but not least, we'll do the French Vanilla Coffee Mate. This is, this is probably the runniest of the three. And we're going to hit the latte button. Look in, sometimes these machines delay when they froth. That one, when I pressed the button, it didn't quite start frothing. It took about five seconds. But it's doing a decent job with it. So when I use milk, um, I like to do the espresso shot for my coffee. But um, with this stuff being so rich, you could probably get away with a six ounce. You could do a coffee six ounce. Because the espresso shot is only two ounces through a K-cup. So you could probably make a, a little bit bigger drink with this. Just because um, they're just so rich. They need a lot of coffee to go with them. And again, I have used... So I filled that up to the latte line. Um, you can put it in... You, can fill, you don't have to fill it up that big. You can put it in uh, right below the cappuccino line. And brew a coffee. And that tastes... That tastes okay 
Okay, so it's done. Does a pretty good job of frothing it. So I just want to show you, I cleaned this out. Um, you don't, about the minimum amount you have to put in is right below that cappuccino line. So get it just to where it's starting to cover the spinning disc. That's a pretty small amount. That's probably how much I would use just because this is such a large quantity. But again, if you're going to brew a coffee into it, it'd probably do a pretty good job. So even when I got that little amount in there, it's doing a pretty good job of frothing it. So here's that small amount. One thing I did notice is when you do a smaller amount, it does kind of burn it on the sides in there just a little bit. But you do get a lot more froth when you do a smaller amount. Okay, so I brewed a coffee just so we can show you how much froth is in each one. Okay, I'm gonna pour just a little bit of coffee in so that you can see the separation. So again, this was the white chocolate. This is the non-dairy. And there's the coffee mate. Again, these are all very rich. And when you do a smaller amount, you do get a lot more foam. So I would like to be able to say that I like the taste of these in the frother, but I actually don't. I got lots of comments. People do put um, creamer in their frother to make their, their lattes and different kinds of drinks. I've tried, I've tried several. Definitely when you do an espresso shot into this creamer, it's way too rich. I've tried brewing uh, coffee and putting the creamer in there. Way too rich. Um, again, I'm not a coffee expert. If this tastes good to you, the, the main purpose of this video was to show you, yes, you can froth it. Um, this, this machine, the curing machine is very, very capable. But um, I was really had high hopes for these Starbucks. Uh, I went to my local Walmart. They were out of them. So I'm thinking, wow, these things must be really popular. Went to Target. They were almost out of them. So they do seem to be kind of popular. They're five bucks a piece. But um, for me, I just did not like the taste of them. You know, the caramel one did taste the best, but even it's just too rich. So I hope the video helps. If you could, please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.